All right, back with a Sunday afternoon update, and uh, we'll take a look at what we've been doing the past three days. This was, uh, I expected this to be a one day project to move all this stuff in, ended up taking three days. There was a lot more there than what we thought, uh, which is a good thing. I'd rather have too much shelving and fixtures than not enough and have to buy more later. Uh, but uh, let me flip the camera around here and I'll take you on another quick tour of what we've got. All right, so a couple pieces of furniture I've put together I ordered and then we'll take a walk out here in this part of the warehouse. Again, this is the air conditioned side that'll be the order picking and production area. Um, we've got all this, we've got a nice counter base here that we could probably be a work table. We've got all this pallet racking to set up, retail shelving. Uh, I'm not gonna have a retail store, okay, but uh, we're gonna use this to, to put product on and uh, use it for picking orders and such and we also have these merchandisers or gondolas whatever you want to call them and this is how they will be configured and uh, so each one of these uh, for Caesar Easy Weed the sheets are 11.8 inches wide uh, by 12 inches deep so I'll be able to get four wide so I'm going to get 56 uh, slots in there for uh, storage of product like that for 12 inch sheets it'll probably be three wide so it'll be 42 per side so plenty of uh, I've got 40 of these things so plus a bunch of small ones too three foot ones these are four foot wide um, so I've got tons of slots for product storage uh, we won't need that many to get to get started but uh, we have plenty and then uh, there's more retail shelving and we'll take a walk over here to the other side of the warehouse and show you what's going on over there uh, so set up some small shelving over here just to get my tools and things organized we got another uh, it's like a checkout register thing that we're using as a desk or a work table and we've got all this shelving we've got like four or five hundred of these shelves and uh, those will go on the racking that'll be mounted to the wall uh, some more so these are the three foot uh, merchandisers uh, we've got it uh, several of those and uh, over here these are the disassembled product shelves um, you see the panels and the bases to them rails for the pallet rocking the shelves uh, big uh, partitions for pegboard and shelving uh, these are more pieces for the uh, gondolas or what do you want to call them and then uh, more slats and then these are all the bases and shelves for those and uh, a bunch of pegboard don't know what I'm gonna do with all that but I'll probably use some of it anyway and I uh, just got a lot of stuff and this is all the parts all the additional shelving and brackets and things that we need so I've got a ton of stuff here probably way more than we'll use in this facility but like I said I'd rather have uh, than not enough and it actually may not be that much because once we uh, set everything up and put those shelves in that are uh, you know spaced you know kind of close together like that we may use most of the shelving just on one wall we'll see how that works out uh, so I think it'll work out nice oh, so <laughs> yeah the last three days were rough uh, and uh, physical and you know I had this thing happen Friday night that was uh, quite painful. I've had this situation a couple times in the past where I get a cramp in my hamstring and in my quad at the same time. And so the only thing you can really do is bend your leg back and forth and try to work one of them out first so that you can concentrate on the other. It, it, is, it is a brutal cramp situation to have. And uh, it's not from being dehydrated because I drink like a gallon and a half of water a day. Uh, it was more uh, climbing up and down ladders and things like that that I'm not quite used to. Uh, tells me I like I have some different exercises to do at the gym uh, pretty soon. But uh, the other night, like I don't know, it was two or three o'clock in the morning. I woke up initially, my hamstring cramped, and then my quad cramped as soon as I stood up. And then while I was trying to work that out, my calf cramped on the same leg. <laughs> so. I'm bending my leg back and forth, rolling my ankle around on this dance at 3 a.m. Molly probably thought I was had lost my mind. Uh, and then my left leg started to cramp, but I uh, was able to fight that one off and survive and uh, eventually get back to sleep. And then last night, I actually slept with icy hot patches on my legs. 
and I slept all night, no cramps or anything. Uh, but yeah, I, I drink a ton of water. Uh, the past several days, I'll actually, because I knew I was gonna be doing this kind of work, I actually bought uh, these uh, electrolyte tablets that I used to use when I was hiking and put those in the water. Um, but my hands are so stiff and tired from gripping heavy things and picking them up. Uh, I feel like I could go rock climbing uh, now. Well, not today, because they're stiff and sore. But And the hand injury isn't too bad. The bruise is almost gone. Uh, the swelling is still there a little bit. Uh, not too bad, but yeah, a little, little stiff and sore, but not as bad as it could have been. So I saw something on TV last weekend that I wanted to talk about, and that was um, leadership. When I was with my old company, right before you know we started the the COVID craziness in 2020, I had gotten together with employees and started teaching some leadership classes to our employees. And the reason I did that was because I wanted our and I, I did this on my own time on a weekend, I think like we're on the evenings or on a Saturday or something. I can't remember how I did it, but uh, we did it outside of work hours. It was a non-paid event. Any employees that wanted to come could come. And um, it was interesting because part of it was a test. I wanted to see how many people was truly interested in growth and professional and personal growth. And then the other uh, part of that was to try to share what I've learned over the years with some of them. Uh, you know, I had a lot of folks who were younger, uh, who were generally interested in being in management and, and, you know, showed interest in having their own company at some point, or maybe they did have their own small company making product. Uh, it, it, not that I know it all, by, by far I don't know it all, but I've, I've been exposed to a lot. And, you know, when I was that age, I probably would have killed to have the opportunity to sit down with someone who had you know variable experiences and and was willing to share some of those experiences and teach me the things that I needed to be thinking about and looking at and how I needed to be looking at things and you know we had quite a few employees come um, it was what was more interesting was I think from the first to the second class I had quite a few drop out and not show up for the second time either so started to show who was truly interested or not and I had a few employees a couple that came to me outside of that and told me and thanked me and told me that it really opened their eyes up to some things and so I, that made me feel really good that I was on the right path and one of the, the another reason I, I was doing it was because our company was grow it was still in that extremely fast growth stage and I was concerned um, if our people could grow fast enough with the company uh, or not. I know my own growth limit, you know, I guess that's what I'll call it, is a, um, you know, when it comes to professional growth and learning, I tend to uh, absorb certain things a lot faster than a lot of people. I learn pretty quickly, especially if it's something I'm doing, not just studying in a book or something. And, um, you know, that the, the I felt like that uh, the growth of the company pace was really pushing me and really taxing me pretty hard. And I was afraid that we, you know, if, if our management team and supervisors could not grow fast enough with the company, they could seemingly get left behind. Uh, you know, f you know, they may be. It may even just appear that they're not doing a very good job when they're not doing anything differently than they did before. But they hadn't grown to adapt to the new demands of the company as it grew. If that makes sense. And uh, that that was a valid fear. Uh, those were things that kind of kept me up at night um, and uh, wanted to to try to teach people and and you know, have them look at things with certain perspectives. Last weekend, uh, was that last weekend was the Super Bowl? I guess it was, it was last Sunday. And I don't really watch the Super Bowl much, but uh, one thing I see every year is the halftime show. Everyone talks, it seems like the Facebook and, and the social media feeds every year fill up with everyone talking about when Prince did the halftime show at the Super Bowl. And I think it was 2004. 
four, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, it, the, the people post it. The video gets posted over and over again. Multiple conversations about it every single year. That's the one thing I can count on with the Super Bowl. And I was telling Tammy about it. Now, and I don't think she had really seen the little video that I had seen before. So I pulled it up on YouTube and watched it and, with her. And, and it was a, kind of a little documentary about that particular halftime show and they said it was raining that day and it was one of those Miami rains that they knew it was going to be raining the whole evening and they were just so worried about it this this layout for this halftime show this outdoor event and it was going to be raining and it could even get worse and they were I think they were worried about Prince pulling out of it or you know what could happen people get hurt or electrocuted or whatever uh, that stage was this really slick uh, surface and uh, these he had these female dancers up there that were in like six or eight inch heels dancing things um, but uh, before the event one of the uh, I, I, I don't remember who the guy was he's like a, one of the event planners or managers or something like that and he said he told Prince uh, that it's raining and that they didn't know if it was going to stop and Prince looked at him and said can you make it rain harder and it told me that Prince you know I, I, it's so unfortunate that you know drugs took someone like that away from us because he was an incredible musician and artist um, I don't think a lot of people even realize at what level of a, an artist that he was but in that moment, he showed that he was a leader. Um, you know, his job was to make everyone around him comfortable, to make everyone know that everything was just fine, that he was going to go out there regardless, and it was going to be epic, and it was, um, and, and just. Everybody looks back on that that was involved in it. You know, if you watch this little documentary, uh, I'll put a link to the video I watched in the comments down below if anyone wants to watch it. Um, but to show that kind of leadership in that situation, um, when you know many artists probably would have pulled out or said they couldn't do it or or scaled it back or something, um, and, and Prince went out there and you know absolutely. Uh, killed it and it was an epic halftime show and that's why people post about it every year and they talk about it every year even if you didn't like his music you had to appreciate what he pulled off in that rainstorm at the Super Bowl unbelievable and and like I said nobody I don't think really too many people think about what he did but that was leadership uh, leadership is making sure that the people around you are comfortable that they know you know what's going on and that you have the ball and that uh, you know, the wheels aren't going to come off and and that's a uh, you know, when, when your people when people around you can look at you like that and, and feel comfortable because you you make them realize that uh, that everything's fine then that allows them to concentrate on their jobs and perform at a better level and everything I mean, you know, I've had the, the pleasure and, and fortunate, and and fortunate, not unfortunate, and fortunate uh, times over the years to be able to work with some people like that, uh, that that just don't get shaken, that they always have an answer uh, for a problem, and uh, I've always tried to be that way myself, just naturally, um, and uh, you know that I've told I tell people that. Um, that leadership is not uh, something you're born with that leaders develop over time and um, that leadership's a choice it's not a career it's not something you're awarded or whatever you choose to be that way and I choose to try to make myself naturally um, not get rattled and, and to try to exude some leadership qualities and things like that Am I good at it? I don't know. I think I'm decent at it. I think there's everyone who's in that kind of a position has room to, to improve. Uh, and I know that there's, you can ask the people that I've worked with. I'm, I'm difficult to work with or work for at times, uh, but it's in 
not it's not in in pursuit of anything other than probably perfection in what we do um, and, and that's just what what I strive for um, but that was just an interesting moment last week when I was watching that and and when I heard that guy say the prince asked can you make it rain harder that I realized he was showing some true leadership in that situation.